Well, welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, the news and commentary from the heartland. And I'm Bill Stone. You know, last week I did something where I kind of broke out of what usually I do because I'm a science fiction fan and ranted a little bit on what Star Trek Discovery has done, which I think has gone full Al-Qaeda. But I realized in doing that, which was probably pushing my brand a little bit where I didn't want it to go, that there is in fact a much larger issue here that should be addressed in terms of my commentary, and it is this. Hollywood, over the last 20 years, particularly the last 20 years, has created a nihilistic society. That is a society that is kind of in the process of suicide and believes things that are horrible and awful and mean and rotten and terrible that really aren't that bad, not in real life. Now, I've said before, say it again, Hollywood, California, you will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. It is a place where rape and child molestation rule the day. It is not a true horror, like we think of it here in the Midwest, for example, where I live anywhere that I've lived, with the possible exception of Chicago. It is not so, here it is a horror. It is a true horror. When that happens, it is a horror. You know, people don't do that all the time. When it happens, it is horrible. So it got, to think, got me to thinking because, again, Hollywood is a place where, at the end of the day, and has always been, since the place was founded, look to history and you can see it, since Hollywood was founded, it has been a place where rape and child molestation rule the day. And if you live there, if you work there, if that is all you know, is horror, is rape, child molestation, and that is ruling your day, if horror is all that you ever see in your life, then horror is the only thing you can create. And this has definitely, in the last 20 years, definitely seeped into not our, just our popular culture, but our culture at large. People have been conditioned by Hollywood and by the entertainment that comes out of it, and that's everything. TV, movies, music, etc. We have been conditioned by some very destructive, nihilistic things that come out of there, and almost all nihilistic, with the possible exception of a few sitcoms. What we see is nihilism. Now I'm going to go through a few, 16, off of Screen Rant's website. The 16 goriest shows on television. Now be aware. Uh, as someone who has been plugged into science fiction and science fiction fandom for all of my 54 years on the planet. Um, these are shows that I know, a lot of them are popular with people I know in fandom. They're also popular outside of that. These are popular programs. And I'm just going to read you because, in all honesty, I don't watch them. I don't watch them. They are too gory and disgusting for me. And they should be to you. These are programs that should be disgusting to you, that you should not be watching because the imagery shown on it is disgusting. And I'm going to talk about that in a second, what that means to you personally. But here's the top shows. Number 16, Game, Game of Thrones. Sorry, I don't have this on my uh, uh, screen, but if I do, it'll really blow everything up. Game of Thrones. Here's what uh, Screen Rant has to say about it at the end of the day. The more extreme ones include the death by molten gold, being used as a crossbow target while strung from a fuller poster bed, being ripped to pieces by white stalkers, white walkers rather, being torn apart by hounds, and a man crushing another man's skull with his bare hands. That is disgusting. It should disgust you. It should be something you do not want to watch, that you would turn off. And yet Game of Thrones has been on at least several years. I've been aware of it for a long time. I don't know how long it's been on. I don't watch it for that precise reason. Because that stuff is disgusting, and it should disgust you. Moving on, the Nick. On top of the shudderworthy uh, worthiness of seeing the doctors and nurses operating without gloves on, the various tools and uh, approaches they take to surgery are displayed in all their primitive glory. The series shows us incisions, drainage, C-sections, missing noses, pulled teeth, and amputations in full frightening detail. On top of which, we get the visual pleasure of seeing the main character repeatedly injecting himself with heroin, just in case you didn't dislike needles enough already. This is something that should disgust you. 
that you will turn off the TV for. Number 14, Penny Dreadful. I'll just run through these. as I'm not going to make any commentary after this. Penny Dreadful, set in London, Victorian London. It, this is period gore, and it's done brilliantly from the first season's bloody experiments and reanimation that led to one Frankenstein-style monster. Literally li ripping another in half, the show has pushed the boundaries of historical horror. Other moments of pure gore include a literal bloodbath, vampires, bloodletting, possession, and the accompanying contortions, holes drilled in skulls, baby butchering, voodoo, death by hot oil, and a vision of blood raining down on a party guest. This should disgust you. Number 13, Boardwalk Empire. There are plenty of other ways to die as well, of course, including bludgeoning, beating, garroting, suffocating, death by shovel, drowning, explosion, and strangulation. These are things that should disgust you. Number 12, the following, while the, slow, while the show has been a solid uh, base in the realm of psychological thriller, there's also a whole lot of gore from start to finish, starting with prison guards murdered as our first escape, and the show shows uh, starts bloody and keeps it up from start to finish. Disciples are taught to murder, with the writers coming up with new and horrifying ways to kill off innocents on a weekly basis. Suicide via ice pick to the eye. Entire families killed. Corpses uh, uh, um, used as dance partners and sex dolls. Uh, animals being casually slaughtered and bystanders lit on fire. Just a few scenes in store for viewers. This should disgust you. Number 11, Daredevil. However, Matt Murdock himself is also not afraid of getting his hands dirty. His battles on the street often end in deadly violence, including a particularly memorable moment toward the start of season one where a man's head ends up being impaled on a spike. It was that death that really pushed, uh, showed fans how violent this show would become, and with the Punisher joining the cast in season two, it got even worse, or perhaps even better. No, not better. This show should disgust you, and you should be turning it off. The Strain, number 10. When the show really gets rolling, it gets extremely bloody, and those worms show up everywhere. Entrails cutting into corpses, beating hearts infested with those crawlies, head bashing, internal shots of arteries being punctured, bashed in skulls and lashings uh, of blood, and that was only the first episode. From there, you can rest assured that the gore just gets more extreme, as the show does all it can to make sure that every episode pushes the envelope for the viewer. This is stuff that should disgust you, that you should dis be totally disgusted by and be wanting to turn off. Number nine, Dexter. Heads removed from bodies and eyes and tongues removed from heads. Bodies and barrels. Severed body parts everywhere. Under Christmas trees attached to mannequins and riding horses. Decomposition and literal bloodbaths make this one of the most disturbingly bloody shows of all time. And if that wasn't enough, there's always Dexter himself pinning people down at, with cling, feel, cling film and uh, stabbing them. This is stuff that should disgust you. Number eight, Hemlock Grove. While many cop shows, shows cop out of show, with showing a human followed by a shot of a wolf, Hemlock Grove goes the extra mile. The transformation include bones and muscle ripping, skin tearing the whole nine yards, just as the person's body is essentially turned inside out on the way to wolfhood. However, that's not the only show time the show has uh, us wanting to hide behind a pillow. Skin is not your friend here as it is scratched off, faces are bitten off, and one character even has their entire chest flayed open. Lovely. This is stuff that should disgust you. You should not be watching this. You should be turning the channel. You should be flipping that channel because this is just disgusting. You should not like watching this. I'm going to make a point about this in a second. Number seven, True Blood. Throughout the series, there is plenty of simple blood drinking and vampires who are messy eaters, but there's also a lot of gleefully violent scenes where blood makes it onto the floors, walls, ceilings, anywhere and everywhere. Slow motion beheadings, exploding vampires, bludgeonings, bur burnings, snapped necks, a spine ripped out, and a human part pie all make an appearance. On top of which, unlike other vampire shows like Buffy, where staking is an impressively clean death, the vamps staked in true blood explode in showers of gore. Number six, Hannibal. Oh, come on, man. It's about a cannibal. Fingers crossed that we haven't seen the last bloodbath this series has to offer. No, this should, if you are psychologically balanced, this should disgust you. Number five, Spartacus. 
Many deaths, however, happen outside the arena, as the other characters scheme and murder. Stabbing, slit throats, and poisoning are all relatively easy ways to go, when compared to a forced C-section, driving off cliffs, or being beaten to death by marble. Number four, Preacher. The show isn't shy about showing gory details either, even when that means seeing a man's bone snapped out through his skin so that he makes a noise like a bunny in a bear trap. The Walking Dead. Number three, in addition to the already dead being shot, ripped, and blasted apart, the living characters also get their fair share of bloody scenes. Limbs and eyes are lost. People are attacked by zombies and each other, and the whole thing just turns into a bloodbath on a regular basis. Number two, Ash vs. Evil Dead. One of the best and bloodiest scenes, however, was the dinner massacre, with m multiple truly inventive deaths and buckets of blood as Ash and company tear the di diner apart. And finally, N Screen Rant's number one goriest uh, television series, American Horror. Uh, just this. Some series may be more gory than others, but the show as a whole, a whole is dripping with gore. This is something that if you are psychologically balanced, should disgust you. All of this should disgust you. You should not be, as Screen Rant is doing, looking forward to it. This is what Hollywood has done to us. They have turned us into a completely nihilistic society, one that wants to watch this stuff. You should not want to watch this stuff. You really shouldn't. If you actually want to watch it, if you turn on your TV and go, wow, I can't wait for the most disgusting thing I can possibly see anywhere on television with these various TV shows, you have something wrong with you. I'm not kidding. If you really like this stuff, you have something wrong with you. And this is what is Hollywood, to varying degrees, has been showing us for the last 20 years. It's been getting worse and worse and worse and worse in all of our entertainment, whether it be television, movies, music, whatever. Now, lots of people... You know, they say, oh, you old guys, you just don't understand popular music. Well, I tell you, there has been a progression. There's been a progression that's over the course of a century or so now in terms of the kind of music that people like. But there came a point, because I was around for it, there came a point after, like, really hard rock and stuff like that, it veered completely out of something that was at least reasonable to listen to. It veered into you know, territory where I can't even, I don't even want to talk about some of the lyrics that are in these things, right? It has, it has become, music has become something that I would not even necessarily call music for the most part. You can find real music. But I mean, look at rap, look at hip hop. I'm sorry, I don't care. That's not real music. Music has, like music is not just people talking to a beat. Now, I understand that some people find this very relatable, but this sort of degradation from people who used to carry an instrument and now hold their dicks, which is what a lot of them do, then what we're seeing here is music that is not really music. It is music that is playing to nihilism. All of this stems out of Hollywood, California. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. It is turning us all into people that, for example, I think there can be some causal link to uh, people who like do mass shootings. We did not see this before. There is absolutely nothing that has changed. In point of fact, you used to be able to buy guns through the mail from a Sears catalog. That was normal. My father bought a 22 rifle when he was 12 years old, and all he needed to get that rifle was a note from his father. He went down to the general store, gave him the note, bought the rifle, and took it to school. The only caveat was the teacher made him keep it in the cloakroom, because otherwise all the kids wanted to come and take a look at it, because it was a new rifle. It's kind of cool. That was normal. That was normal at the time and the place. We have not seen these mass shootings until very recently in our history, and it is because Hollywood has now conditioned us to be utterly nihilistic. We believe 
that the things that we're seeing on television actually represent reality. The things that we see in our movies actually represent reality. The things we hear in our music are actually representing reality. All of it is not. It is not. It is not. A rea it, our reality is not like that. Our reality is not like anything you see on television, in music, or on, uh, in movies. Nothing like it. Absolutely nothing like it. That entertainment is made by people who only live in a world that is horror. What we must do is stop watching it. And if you really do believe that this stuff that I just described is good, if you really believe you want to sit down and watch this kind of gore all the time, then you had a psychological problem. I'm sorry to have to tell you because that's going to be a lot of people. But if you really enjoy this stuff, you have a psychological problem and you need to seek treatment. Now, I know there's lots of people who don't believe in the psychological profession, but I'm here to tell you I have um, three family members. Well, two now, my late father. I have two close family members who are in that field. And I myself have been in and out of therapy since I was in college. Um, therapy works, okay? I'm not talking about drugs that psychiatrists give out. I'm talking about therapy that are done by licensed psychologists. There's a difference. Psychiatrists basically just put you on meds. Psychologists try to work with you to get over your issues. So, if you really think that those things are good, that they are something you really want to watch. They get you really excited. All the blood, the gore, the guts, the veins in their teeth, and eating dead, burnt bodies, as Arlo Guthrie once said, then you need to have a psychologist. And you can find one very easy, simply. You go to locator.apa.org. It's scrolling by my lower third. There's, going to, there's a link in my description box. It's locator.apa.org. Dot org. That is a site, the APA.org is the American Psychological Association. And if you go there to locator.apa.org, you can find a qualified therapist in your area. Now, as someone who has been in and out of therapy and has had people in my immediate family, what I would make a suggestion, however, is this. Go with someone who has a PhD behind their name and preferably someone who is older. My father often said, that sometimes when you're treating people, you can't just do a diagnosis and try to go from there. You have to do what works. You know, you learn as you go along as a psychologist what will work and what doesn't. You know, what, what the textbook said when you were in college versus what real life is when you get out. Try to find someone who has a PhD behind their name and has been practicing for 10 to 20 years or more. That's what you want to look for. But definitely go, if you really like this stuff, if you really think this is good, go to locator.apa.org and find yourself a therapist. You need a therapist. If you really like this stuff, you do, absolutely do, have a psychological problem. You should not like this stuff. And this stuff is creating a nihilistic society in which people believe that what they're seeing on television in these really gory stuff is representative of reality. And I think to some extent it's why we have mass shooters. 30 years ago we did not have them. We just didn't. But 30 years ago we had a much more hopeful outlook on society. Today, society is nihilistic in so many ways, but is very, very pushed by Hollywood in all of our entertainment. What you need to be doing when these shows come on is changing the channel, putting something else on. Watch a good DVD or something like that. These things from Hollywood, from people who only know horror in their lives, and so all they can create is horror. These people are turning our entire society into nihilism. That is very, very dangerous. So, turn it off. At the very least, shut it off. And if this sort of thing is, in, de in fact, what you really, really enjoy, then you do have a psychological problem and you need to seek a therapist. 
and you can find a qualified therapist, and again, I suggest a PhD who has some time under their belt, at locator.apa.org. That URL again is locator.apa.org. One more time, locator.apa.org. It just scrolled back past my lower third, and it will be the first link in my description. So, having said that, that's pretty much the commentary. Pretty much all I've got to say about that today. So, if you like what I'm doing, please do a like, sub, hit the notification bell, tell all your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and the livestock to do the same. And, uh, you know, if you want to contribute to me other ways, I have a link to my uh, subscribe star and my PayPal tip jar and also a uh, link on my website where you can go and find other ways to support me, mostly through my uh, Amazon wish list. Okay, all that said, I guess I would say thank you very much for watching uh, Tales from SYL Ranch, news and commentary from the heartland. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.